What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about various print technologies such as laser printers, inkjet printers, thermal printers, impact printers, virtual printers, and 3D printers. Let's talk about laser printing. So laser printing is an electrostatic digital printing process. It produces high quality text and graphics and moderate quality photographs by repeatedly passing a laser beam back and forth over a negatively charged cylinder called a drum to define a differentially charged image. The drum then selectively collects electrically charged powdered ink, also known as toner, and transfers the ink to paper, which is then heated in order to permanently fuse the text, imagery, or both to the paper. A laser printer's major components are as follows. There's the imaging drum. This applies the page image to the transfer belt or roller, frequently combined with the toner supply in the toner cartridge. Then you have the developer. This pulls toner from the toner supply and sends it to the imaging drum. Then you have the fuser assembly. This fuses the page image to the paper. Then we have the transfer belt or the transfer roller. This transfers the page image from the drum to the page. Then you have the pickup rollers. They pick up paper. Then you have the paper separation pad or the separate pad. This enables pickup rollers to pick up only one sheet of paper at a time. And then you have the duplexing assembly and this is optional. This switches paper from the front to the back side so that the printer can print on both sides of the paper. Let's talk about the laser imaging process. Now, this is a seven step process that you are going to have to know in order to successfully pass this examination. So step one is processing. So the document to be printed is encoded in a page description language such as PostScript, printer command language or open XML paper specification. The raster image process converts the page description into a bitmap, which is stored in the printer's laser memory. Each horizontal strip of dots across the page is also known as a raster line or a scan line. Next, you have what is called charging. In older printers, a corona wire positioned parallel to the drum, or in more recent printers, a primary charge roller projects an electrostatic charge onto the photoreceptor, which is also known as the photoconductor unit, a revolving photosensitive drum or belt, which is capable of holding an electrostatic charge on its surface while it is in the dark. Then you have the next step is exposing. A laser printer uses a laser because lasers are able to form highly focused precise and intense beams of light, especially over the short distances inside a printer. The laser is aimed at a rotating polygonal mirror, which directs the light beam through a system of lenses and mirrors onto the photoreceptor drum, writing pixels at rates of up to 65 million times per second. The drum continues to rotate during the sweep, and the angle of sweep is canted very slightly to compensate for this motion. The stream of rasterized data held in the printer's memory rapidly turns the laser on and off as it sweeps. The laser beam neutralizes the charge on the surface of the drum, leaving a static electric negative image on the drum surface, which will repel the negatively charged toner particles. The areas on the drum which are struck by the laser, however, momentarily have no charge, and the toner being passed against the drum by the toner coded developer roll in the next step from the roll's rubber surface to the charged portions on the surface of the drum. Then we get to step four. This is the developing stage. So as the drum rotates, the toner is continuously applied in a 15 micron thick layer of the developer roll. The surface of the photoreceptor with the latent image is exposed to the toner covered developer roll. Toner consists of fine particles of dry plastic powder mixed with carbon black or coloring agents. The toner particles are given a negative charge inside the toner cartridge. And as they emerge onto the developer developer drum, they are electrostatically attracted to the photoreceptor's latent image, which is the area on the surface of the drum which had been struck by the laser. Because negative charges repel each other, the negatively charged toner particles will not adhere to the drum where the negative charge remains. 
Next, we have what is called transferring. So a sheet of paper is then rolled under the photoreceptor drum, which has been coated with a pattern of toner particles in the exact places where the laser struck it moments before. The toner particles have a very weak attraction to both the drum and the paper, but the bond to the drum is weaker and the particles transfer once again, this time from the drum surface to the paper surface. Some machines also use a positively charged transfer roll on the back side of the paper to help pull the negatively charged toner from the photoreceptor drum to the paper. Then we get to the sixth step. This is called the fusing process. So the paper passes through rollers in the fuser assembly where temperatures up to 427 degrees Celsius or 801 degrees Fahrenheit and pressure are used to permanently bond the toner to the paper. One roller is usually a hollow tube known as a heat roller and the other is a rubber back roller also known as a pressure roller. A radiant heat lamp is suspended in the center of the hollow tube and its infrared energy uniformly heats the roller from the inside. For paper bonding of the toner, the fuser roller must be uniformly hot. And then we get to the seventh step. This is called the cleaning step. So as the drum completes a revolution, it is exposed to an electrically neutral soft plastic blade that cleans any remaining toner from the photoreceptor drum and deposits it into a waste reservoir. A charge roller then reestablishes a uniform negative charge on the surface of the now clean drum, readying it to be struck again by the laser. Now, these are just the seven steps. You don't have to remember everything that I just said, but you do need to know these seven seven steps on your screen so that you can pass this exam. So just keep that in mind. Let's go on to laser maintenance. So the major elements when it comes to laser printer maintenance is, you know, first things first, you want to make sure the printer is turned off and disconnected from any power sources. So that is the ultimate step right there. But here are the other major steps. So you want to replace the toner cartridge. When the toner runs low, you want to replace the toner cartridge and the imaging drum. If the laser printer's toner cartridge is included with the imaging drum, you want to apply maintenance kits. Printers have a lot of moving parts that can wear down over time and will eventually need to be replaced. These components often include fuser assemblies, air filters, transfer rollers, pickup rollers, and other types of rollers and separation pads. Printer manufacturers will supply you with a maintenance kit to allow for you to swap out or replace parts once a predetermined print page count has been reached. Third thing you want to do is calibrate the printer. So laser printers should be calibrated if the print quality starts to decline. The print calibration process on a laser printer adjusts density settings to make up for changes caused by environmental differences or aging print cartridges. Some laser printers perform automatic calibration, but you can also force the printer to perform calibration on an as needed basis. You need to see the instruction manual to your printer for complete details about how to do that. And then finally, we come to cleaning. So laser printers use very fine grain powdered toner. You can use a vacuum cleaner that is designed to clean up the laser printer toner due to the particles getting everywhere inside and outside of the printer. The best advice is to follow the cleaning instructions outlined by the manufacturer of that laser printer as it relates to different parts and components of the printer. Let's talk about inkjet printers. So inkjet printing is a type of computer printing that recreates a digital image by propelling droplets of ink onto paper and plastic substrates. Inkjet printers are the most commonly used type of printer and range from small, inexpensive consumer models to expensive professional machines. Inkjet printers are the most popular type of printer in Soho environments. Their print quality can rival that of laser printers and virtually all inkjet printers in use today are able to print both color and black text and photographs. Now here are the major components of an inkjet printer. You have the ink cartridge. Now I understand some of these inkjet printers, they use external ink tanks. You got the print head, the roller, the paper feeder, the duplexing assembly, the carriage, and the belt. Let's talk about some inkjet maintenance. So the major elements of maintaining an inkjet printer are as follows. You need to replace the ink cartridges. The printing preference or printer properties dialog of your operating system will provide information to let you know when it's time to change out the ink cartridges. You need to calibrate this thing. Most inkjet printers will require some type of printer calibration, especially as it relates to print head alignment. This process involves printing one or more sheets of paper to check to see if the printer prints straight lines. 
lines. This process can be done automatically or manually. You need to check the nozzles. If the printer has been idle for a while, you need to perform a nozzle check, a nozzle check, or a pattern check. We'll print a pattern that uses all of the nozzles from all of the print heads to display a pattern's correct appearance. Use the printout to compare against the pattern image displayed on screen to check for gaps or missing colors. Run the nozzle check again until the pattern matches, but be mindful that the nozzle checks do require the use of ink. And then you need to clean those print heads and then you need to go ahead and clear paper jams. Now note that some printers, they do run automatic nozzle cleaning or calibration routines when you do change the ink cartridges. So just keep that in mind as well. Let's talk about thermal printers. So thermal printing is a digital printing process which produces a printed image by selectively heating thermal paper when the paper passes over the thermal print head. The coating turns black in the areas where it is heated, producing an image. Two color direct thermal printers can print both black and an additional color, which is often red, by applying heat at two different temperatures. The most common use for thermal printing can be found at cash shear machines for printing out receipts. And this is also known as a point of sale or a POS. Let's talk about the features of a standard thermal printer. So you have the feed assembly. This pulls paper from a roll wound around a center plastic spool or spindle. And then you have the heating element. This uses a heated thermal paper or ribbons that actually make an image. Let's talk about special thermal paper. So thermal paper, which is sometimes referred to as an audit roll, is a special fine paper that is coated with a material formulated to change color when exposed to heat. It is used in thermal printers, particularly in inexpensive or lightweight devices such as adding machines, cash registers, and credit card terminals. The surface of the paper is coated with a solid state mixture of dye and a suitable matrix. When the matrix is heated above its melting point, the dye reacts with the acid, shifts to its color form, and then the change form is then conserved in a metastable state where the matrix solidifies black quickly enough. Thermal maintenance. So the major elements of maintaining a thermal printer are as follows. You need to replace the paper when it runs out. You need to clean the heating element. Now, many vendors recommend cleaning the print head after each roll of thermal transfer ribbon. You can also use isopropyl alcohol to clean the print heads. And then you also want to remove debris. Use cleaning materials recommended by the printer manufacturer to remove debris, such as torn paper, solid ink flakes, or label coatings that can build up on rollers and the print head. Let's talk about impact printers. So impact printers create an image by using some mechanism to physically press an ink ribbon against the page, causing the ink to be deposited on the page in the shape desired. These printers are typically loud, but remain in use today in most industrial and point of sale applications because of their unique ability to function with multi-part forms. Dot matrix printers, which prints characters in the form of dots placed on the page, these are the most common form of impact printers. The basic elements of an impact printer are as follows. You have a print head, you got the ribbon, you have a tractor feeder, and you have impact paper. Impact printers use plain uncoated paper or labels in various widths and sizes. These printers typically use a tractor feed mechanism to pull or push the paper past the print head. Tractor fed printer paper and labels have fixed or removable sprocket holes on both sides of the paper. This type of media is often called impact, dot matrix, continuous feed, or pin feed paper or labels. Impact printer maintenance. So the major elements of maintaining an impact printer are as follows. You need to replace the ribbon. The ribbon on an impact printer lubricates the pins in the print head and protects the print head from impact damage. You need to replace the print head. If damage to one or more pins is detected, replace the print head because damaged pins could snag the ribbon or if the pins break, it could leave gaps in the characters being printed out. And then you need to replace the paper. Check for problems with torn sprocket holes, separated tear-offs, and damaged sheets. Tear off any problematic pages and use only good paper from the paper stack. Also adjust the tractor feeds as necessary to ensure the printer is properly pulling and pushing the paper. 
Let's talk about virtual printers. So in computing, a virtual printer is a simulated device whose user interface resembles that of a printer driver, but it is not connected to a physical printer. The virtual printer is used to create a file instead of a printout. You have three major categories of virtual printers. You have print to file. This is used to create a file that can be copied to a specific printer for output. You have print to PDF or XPS or Microsoft XPS. This is used to save files that cannot be modified, but still need to be easily shared and printed. And then you have print to image. This is designed to convert documents directly into common bitmap graphic formats, such as TIFF, JPEG, BMP, etc. Some of these apps can also create PDF files as well. And then let's talk about 3D printer. So 3D printing, which is also known as additive manufacturing, is the construction of a three-dimensional object from a CAD or a computer-aided design model or a digital 3D model. The term 3D printing can refer to a variety of processes in which material is deposited, joined, or solidified under computer control to create a three-dimensional object, with the material being added together, such as liquid molecules or powder Outer grains being fused together, typically layer by layer. Fused deposition modeling or FDM is the main 3D printing process that most people are familiar with. The most common material is a strand of plastic filament that is fed from a spool to a moving printer head. The printer head heats the plastic and thinly layers it on the printing platform in cross sections that eventually build up into the 3D object that has been designed on the computer. This process is also carried out on a 3D printer using these four components. You have the filament. This is the plastic material that is fed from a spool through many different materials which can be used. The filament is the quote unquote ink of an FDM printer and is available in various colors. Next, you have the extruder. This receives the plastic filament and melts it. Then you have the nozzle. The nozzle is a small spray hole that emits the melted filament. And then you have the bed. The bed is the platform on which the object is created. And then let's talk about maintaining 3D printers. So here are the best practices for maintaining a 3D printer. You need to ensure you have heat resistant lubricants or they may melt and become a part of the printed object. You need to use different brushes to clean different parts of the printer. An example would be to use a stiff brass brush, which is good for cleaning the outsides of the nozzles and then clean the filament in between print jobs and make sure it is at the correct temperature. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which of the following is a laser printer component that holds a representation of the output image drawn on its surface by the laser? Is it transfer belt? Is it the print head? Is it transfer roll or is it? the imaging drum. So which of the following is a laser printer component that holds a representation of the output image drawn on its surface by the laser? The correct answer is uh, the imaging drum. All right, next question. Which of the following is a relatively inexpensive printer type commonly used in Soho environments? Is it an inkjet printer? Is it a thermal printer? Is it a laser printer or is it an impact printer? So which of the following is a relatively inexpensive printer type that you will find in a bunch of Soho environments? The correct answer is uh, an inkjet printer. And the final question is, which of the following printer types uses a tractor feed during the printing process? Is it inkjet, laser, impact, or thermal? So which of the following printer types uses a tractor feed? The correct answer is uh, an impact printer, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So in summary, we have talked about laser printers, inkjet printers, thermal impact, virtual and 3D printers. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment below, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go visit my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.